A late night shooting sends four teenagers to the hospital tonight. We're learning more about the incident. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Rich Pierce. We first told you about the major investigation last night at 11. Since then, we've learned that the four victims are all teenagers. We are breaking into programming right now to bring you breaking news out of Kennywood Park, where a mass casualty incident has been declared. Right now, we're going to go to Channel 11's Susan Copen. She's joining us on the phone. Susan was actually there, and Susan, you heard those gunshots. Can you just take us through Take us through what you heard and what you saw. A man was killed and other hospitalized after a shooting in broad daylight in Pittsburgh's Hill District. This was just after one o'clock. If you're not the most crafty person like me, you might consider getting something created by a local artist. Art Smiths of Pittsburgh in the South Hills has gifts from dozens of local shops and the annual handmade arcade holiday market will take over the convention center next weekend. She described emotional reunions happening between uh, kids, teenagers and their parents picking them up. We talked to Susan Copen, who was there uh, waiting to pick up her son and she called him after hearing those gunshots and told him to run. Allegheny Valley Hospital will no longer offer inpatient mental health services to younger adults. Starting Monday, the hospital will only offer psychiatry services to patients 60 and older. It's been an active few days for weather and the rain may have forced people indoors earlier today. Meteorologist Stephanie Allison joins us now and Stephanie, how are things looking right now? Tonight, dozens of people still dealing with the effects of Friday's flooding, especially in Westmoreland and Southern Allegheny counties. Channel 11's Lauren Talata joins us live tonight from Westmoreland County. Lauren. Yeah, David and Lisa, that contractor arrested just today. Court documents show that he was paid to do work at three homes here in Forest Hills. But not only did he not do the work, as you can see, he left a big mess. A scary scene just a few hours ago outside this repo lot in McKeesport. Workers tell me a man came to get his car or die trying. And tonight we're showing you exclusive video that captured the entire ordeal. Now this is an example of one of those bad burn barrels the chief was talking about. You can see it's old, it's rusted through, it has holes in it. It looks like it's going to tip over at any time. He says you should get rid of those barrels, replace it with something new. Now as for Mark's family, there is a GoFundMe campaign set up for his wife and his three children. We have a link to that GoFundMe with this story on our WPXI News app. Reporting tonight, Rich Pierce, Channel 11 News. Well, Ryan, the crowds also braved that cold and they still came out in the thousands. In fact, they were right here just a couple of hours ago where I'm standing right now. Of course, they're breaking things down. The main stage is being torn away, but the people we spoke with today are just so happy that they could be here and have a chance to kick off the holiday season in style. The project here to mitigate flooding started back in March, but the man who lives on the corner here, Frank Bear, says what he did not expect as part of this much needed project was the nightmare that came with it. Well, the crowd here is brimming with anticipation. The loudest reaction that there's been actually just happened about 30 seconds ago was when uh, they showed the Ohio Senate race and it looked like J.D. Vance, Republican there, had taken the lead. So folks are really taking an interest in what's going on in all of those hotly contested races. Of course, they're hoping for some good news here, although the polls have tightened in the last uh, few minutes. Now, so far, and no one has spoken, no one from the Oz campaign, no service get here at the venue. Now it is important uh, to note and it is apparent that people are hoping as the night goes on that we continue to see those day of those election day votes counted and that helped narrow the gap right now. Let's take a look at the scene uh, real quick here. It's just up the hill from here. Now it's still pretty active, not quite as active as it was when we arrived. Now, David, that's right. I did speak with the pool owner, and I'll bring you exactly what he said in just a couple of seconds here. But I do want to tell you the response here is massive, and it has continued throughout the evening. You can't see a whole lot from where we are right now because we are pushed back uh, pretty far away from the building uh, right now. Besides those dozens of firefighters, we've seen members from the DEP hazmat. We've seen physicians from AHN and UPMC and more here. Now this is a look from earlier when we first arrived this building. It's again, like you said, a pool and spa business 
it's gone. The building is gutted here. We're told the first call came in around 2.15. When crews arrived a few minutes later, flames had already engulfed that building. They were shooting out of the building. There were chemicals inside, and that's what led to the call for evacuation within a half-mile radius. We spoke with the owner of this business who walked us through what happened after the storm manager called him and told him the business was on fire. Yeah, well, the mood here has certainly changed about an hour ago. That's when Dr. Mehmet Oz took the stage, and since then, the crowd has thinned significantly here. A lot of folks going home. It has been a long day after all. Now, he only spoke for a couple of minutes, but he thanked supporters, saying they proved to him tonight that they believe in him as much as he believes in them. And he says after all the votes in the state are counted, he's going to be on top. Yeah, David and Lisa, that contractor arrested just today. Court documents show that he was paid to do work at three homes here in Forest Hills. But not only did he not do the work, as you can see, he left a big mess. <sighs> It's disappointing, to say the least. Tim Rind owns two properties on Washington Road in Forest Hills. Finally found a gentleman that was willing to deal with those extra large block that my neighbor had put in prior. I wanted that exact wall continued 160 feet down for both properties. The man he found was Eric Stasiowski of Perfection Contracting. According to court documents, the Rochester borough man cashed checks for thousands of dollars from rent and another victim, but didn't finish the work, eventually breaking off communication entirely. So you've lost $20,000. You're going to have to pay 20 more thousand, and you're not going to get what you wanted. Correct. It's embarrassing. I. I try to be prudent with the money that I make. It's not just what was not done. According to the criminal complaint, Rint's property suffered, quote, catastrophic damage. The one guy told me that if I don't have this resolved by winter freeze thrall cycles, that it could be imminent catastrophic failure of the foundation of my home, which is nothing that you want to hear. Stasiowski faces seven felony charges in total. You think, what did I miss? Did I miss any red flags? Was he like, should I have looked more into his background? I don't know. It's, it's terrible. So I hope it doesn't happen to anybody else. Now, just this evening, we learned that Stasiowski is also facing a similar charge out of Beaver County. Reporting live in Forest Hills tonight, Rich Pierce, Channel 11 News. Uh, a local woman and her three kids headed out of town, leaving their dog, one-year-old Nani, at home with a sitter. But that woman's been home for a week, and Nani and the sitter are nowhere to be found. When she reached out saying that she was also a dog sitter, I was like, oh, this is... This is great. Last minute prayers answered for Eva Hodgden. She'd found someone through a neighborhood Facebook group to watch one year old Nani for the weekend. And then she messaged me privately and said that um, she had German shepherds, that she had been like an apprentice groomer and everything seemed trustworthy. But it wasn't. Eva arrived home on the 4th of July and went to the address given to her by the dog sitter. I started getting this like real gut feeling that something was wrong. When she got there, the sitter and the dog nowhere to be found. It turns out the woman not only did not live there, but she used a fake name online. I should have checked more. Um, I just never imagined that anybody could ever do something like this. Now the search is on for the 50 pound all black German Shepherd with a curly tail. And she has one ear that sticks up and one that flops down and it's super cute and gives her a lot of personality. Eva is still holding out hope for another answered prayer, the safe return of Nani before her kids come home. If not, it will be a lesson for for now um, in trusting people and making sure that you're checking and being safe. But I'm just really hoping that she's home first and this can be a story that I tell them later down the line. 
Now, Eva tells me the sitter in this story has ties to Braddock. So Eva's been dealing with Braddock police and police here in Trafford. So if you happen to see a dog fitting Nani's description, you can call either of those police departments. I did speak with Trafford police earlier this evening. They tell me again the sitter in this case is facing charges. Reporting in Trafford tonight, I'm Rich Pierce, Channel 11 News. Channel 11's Rich Pierce has braved the crowds and the cold weather for hours tonight, and he joins us live. Rich. Well, Ryan, the crowds also braved that cold, and they still came out in the thousands. In fact, they were right here just a couple of hours ago where I'm standing right now. Of course, they're breaking things down. The main stage is being torn away, but the people we spoke with today are just so happy that they could be here and have a chance to kick off the holiday season in style. They came out in droves. We just got to see the tree light up. Young and old, parents and kids. You're having fun? Yeah. It's all about the family, not really about the presents. And even the canine. Are you having fun tonight? <laughs> Is that a yes? That's a yes. To see not one tree lighting, but two this light up night Saturday, including the famous building side pine. Lit by the man in the red suit himself. Yeah, I'm just the happiest guy right now. Although temperatures were low. We've got our snowsuits on. We've got about a thousand good comments about we got snowsuits on. We're uh, cozy and warm and just having a good day. Spirits were high. Probably the, the singing because I like the song that said Santa Claus is coming to the town. Snap. Really excited to see all the fun activities they have planned for everyone. Just happy to be here to ring in the holiday season. I think it's exciting to get back out here again and see everybody. Yeah, excitement. That was the big time vibe here uh, this evening. Exciting to see that tree lit. Of course, there are other events in the city throughout the holiday season. The holiday market in Market Square is actually open through December 23rd. Now, as far as safety goes, we told you leading up to today that Pittsburgh police officers were going to be working 12 hour shifts. We have reached out to Pittsburgh police to find out if there were any major events or any problems downtown tonight in those celebration areas. We haven't heard back yet, but I can tell you we've been here since four o'clock and we haven't seen anything reporting live in downtown Pittsburgh tonight Rich Pierce Channel 11 News hey Lisa that response over now but it was very active here for about six hours let's show you what's left of this building and it's not much and I'll tell you what Lisa we would be up closer to this building if we could but there is still a strong chemical smell in the air Someone come by and then came in the front door and said, listen, uh, your building's on fire. Part of a burnt shell is all that remains of country pools and spas on Freeport Road in Harrison Township. That's a total loss. I can't believe it. Gone. Nobody got hurt. John Plasek has owned this location for 23 years. He wasn't there when the fire started, but his store manager was. He uh, got a hose, tried to put it out. When that didn't work, they called 911. The fire drew a major response. Dozens of firefighters from several departments were on scene from just after 2 p.m. And we already had fire through the roof. To well into the evening. Chemicals like chlorine inside the building led to an evacuation of a half mile radius around the shop. It also created a new set of challenges for firefighters. It takes the element to a different level because now you're dealing with a hazardous materials incident and not a structure fire incident. Also responding were members of County Hazmat, the DEP, and local physicians. The site was a shock for passers by, like Amy, who was picking up her kid from her mom's house who lives nearby. It's devastating. I mean, especially right around the holidays for, for a business. I mean, we own our own business, too, so seeing another business go up is pretty sad. Plasek says he's just happy no one got hurt, and he's thankful for the work of firefighters. These people are magnificent. It's sad that it burnt down, but, you know, we can always rebuild, and we will re rebuild, and we'll be bigger and better. Yeah, bigger, better, and soon, the business owner tells us he hopes to be open again for the busy season starting March 1st. Now, as for all of those firefighters, and there were dozens of them here on scene, they all had to go through a decontamination process if they were within 50 feet of the structure. That's because of all the chemicals that were in the air. Reporting live in Harrison Township, Rich Pierce, Channel 11 News.